good morning everyone and uh, welcome to mules of my my meetup group and uh, so today we have the topic log 4j2 and uh, so robin uh, we have the speaker robin with us who will be uh, presenting with this and so before we start with that we have some safe harbor statement so both the speaker and the host are organizing this meetup in individual capacity only and this presentation is strictly for learning purpose only and not meant for any promotional activities organizer do not hold any responsibility that same solution will work for your business requirements housekeeping uh, so we we are recording this and a recording of this meetup will be uploaded to our uh, youtube page and you can just check it out within 24 hours we will upload that and questions you can ask at any time in the chat and make it more interactive we have enabled mics for everyone so you can ask directly from the speaker give us feedback so we do look at that and so today we have uh, two organizers for this meetup uh, myself uh, shubham chaurasia and i'm working as a professional integration developer in billenium and i'm use of certified developer uh, so that's all about me uh, over to you giri thank you shubham good morning everyone thanks for joining us today Myself, Giridhar, I'm a certified developer and architect, both in MuleSoft and AWS. Working at Hashtin as a senior architect, I'm taking care of uh, MuleSoft accounts in Hashtin. I'm leading Mysore meetup group, and then I'm a MuleSoft mentor as well. And that's all. Coming to feedback, uh, we have requested in every, I mean, we are doing the same in every meetups and this meetup also, in this session also, we are requesting you everyone to provide your uh, suggestions as a feedback that will really help us to bring up a few more interesting topics. And when it comes to speaker today, today Robin Sinha is with us to talk about logging importance and uh, the best practices. So what to you, Robin, all the best. Thanks, Giri. Hey, everyone. Uh, let me share my screen. Hey, everyone. This is Robin Sina. I'm Mule Certified Developer. I have total 1.8 years of experience, mostly in MuleSoft. Right now, I'm working as a specialist one in at Hasdin by Deloitte. I'm in my past experience, I mostly work on SAP, Salesforce, Service Cloud, and Snowflake integration, etc. I'm also certified AWS Cloud Practitioner. So today I will be taking a session on log log for J2 and especially on log for uh, logging with log for J2 with the customization. So let's start. Robin, you can hide this, uh, this thing. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. So, uh, today, first of all, we'll know about what is log for J2, what is log for J2 architecture, and then we'll have more focus on how to customize logging with on-prem deployment. And then we'll see how we can integrate third party, third party logging tools with MuleSoft followed by a demo and trivia and then wrap up. So. First of all, before talking about log for J2 or logging, why we need logging in the first place? This is the, like, what is the importance of logging when it comes to? So basically these are the four things which came to my mind is like debugging, supportability, system visibility, and system traceability. So let's focus on debugging. Why debugging? So for example, as a MuleSoft in Mule, basically this, we, I'm talking about only in the respect of MuleSoft. So for example, if an application is deployed on cloud up and you want to see how and why your requests are failing or anything. So for example, in MuleSoft, a uh, mule even changes from connector to connector. So for example, a request can a payload for request of HTTP connector can be different than a response. So the payload changes, but you won't be able to see it if it is deployed on cloud up or if your yeah if your cloud uh, if your application is running you need to debug it so and then you can manually see it for example if it is in production how you would see like where your uh, api is failing or your api is, uh, has some what is the payload at, at this point so point to point how we can see it so if you log it 
if you log your payloads if you log your connectors if you log that where it went where the mule event is at present and how the things work like all the mule flow basically then you can debug it otherwise you won't be able to see what what is the wrong what is wrong with your application supportability again comes with debugging so for example you your application is already in production and some like after five months it is giving started erroring out somewhere how, how you will see it without locks like you need locks to see it so for example someone generates a ticket first of all the first and foremost thing you need to uh, you you do after analyzing the ticket you see the locks that what happened and when uh, responding to that ticket the, the third th thing is system visibility so i deployed my application it is working very fine it is giving me responses but at some cases so there can be million of millions of transactions happening so at some cases there can be happening that the system is erroring out at some places but you won't be as there are millions of uh, transaction going on simultaneously you won't be able to trace that out so if you see that log then you can see that okay yeah i can see that with these systems it interacted my application interacted so an app endpoint can be exposed to multiple systems too so from there you in the logs you can see that how my system is like my application interacting with different services and where that erroring out happened or when and how what was the response similar system traceability again an important point so for example uh so when there are multiple uh for system involved as we are the middleware and we are integrating everything so more system means more risk so for example if somehow we don't this can be done with traceability can be done especially like milsoft especially offers a uh, log level trace so where it will be a very detailed application so which services were called so risks are also involved then you need to for, for example let's take example uh please tell me if i'm speaking very fast or like if you have any any doubt in the session please uh, stop me and tell me at that place only and we can uh, talk about that so coming back to system traceability so if some risk is involved and something happened with your system with your application which is you can trace by use of logging that when it interacted with the session and uh, uh, with the service and how the risk got injected in us or where the risk is happening so this is system traceability again uh, again a common thing in middle being a middleware so if two services are interacting and we are the middleware we are giving them the data from here from point a so basically from point a to point b and these two are different systems so anything happens in that flow from here to here the first point of contact is always the integration basically mulesoft will be responsible so any data is coming wrong so and anything is coming wrong here first they will ask the integration that okay uh, uh, are you sending the data correctly or something because for example uh, let's take an example for this for better understanding so there's a let's take a example for like a clothing brand abc let's take a, like a pantaloons so when you buy so pantaloons is a company and when you go to their store their store has a service which is not which is a third party service which pantaloons has taken from somewhere else so let's take example that store is operating on oracle service oracle has their own way of generating receipts and the your use case is that when you go to the store the store person who is uh, like billing you ask that do you want a receipt on your email or sms and you just say yes i want that then that so that oracle x store or oracle store doesn't provide that email functionality and the company pantaloons or abc wants the functionality to happen then what they will do they will have another third party application hired so now the third party application which will generate the receipt according to all the graphic ui will be needing the data of the customer again as a mulesoft being a middleware we have the responsibility to send that data from the oracle to the third party which is generating receipts for example salesforce or anything service cloud now again being a middleware we'll take the data we'll send it to 
the third party, which is let's take for example here, Service Cloud, and we'll so again those are very two different systems. So we need to transform the data. So Oracle has its own transactions. They can be JSONs, transaction JSON, transaction XMLs, and this Service Cloud can have their own transactions. So basically, we being a middleware, we have to transform that how that third party application needs the data. Again, so anything will happen. First point of contact is always the middleware. Will response. So again, if someone says, okay, uh, someone asks that, okay, why I'm not getting receipts at my phone. So being the middleware, first of all, you need to see the logs that are you good then, for example. And so for you will see that, okay, I got a request. I responded, I transformed and I sent to the uh, sales, uh, service cloud. And now it is not my responsibility and we need to contact with service cloud, but why they are not sending receipts because they have to trigger the receipts. We were only middleware. So from we took the data from point A and according to our contract, whatever in the mention, like how you need to send the data to point B, we sent and our job is done there. And if this, the second service, so this all things you need to say, you need to have a proper logging mechanism, proper debugging mechanism in built in your application when talking about a production environment. Otherwise, you won't be able to tell that where this is erroring out and why it is failing. So you as we as a middleware is answerable to this. So this, this is the reason why logs are important. Now coming to logging in MuleSoft. So log for J2. So why, what is log for J2? So basically log for J2 is not originally from MuleSoft, but it originates from Apache service. And that Apache service is used in Java services and was you uh, like is you like is used in Java services from very long time. And from there as MuleSoft also being one, one Java service, it came to log for, uh, MuleSoft. It was adopted in MuleSoft and MuleSoft gives a default log for J2 file inbuilt, you would say better uh, in your source main resources. So for example, uh, coming back to this, Let, let me, if I create new project, let's name it test. Yeah. So this test, this is my test project, which I right now created has a default log J, log for J2 file. This is the default which Mule provides from their server. Now let's come back. So this log for J2, again, as uh, this log for J2 is very customizable, you can have integrate different services and very, and it is originating from Apache. So basically you can have all the services, which all the th things which can be done in Java services in a, uh, can be, like it gets inherited to MuleSoft by just by this log for J2. So again, as this is the external service with external service, as I already say that how much services are involved with you, the more the risk. So it has its own vulnerabilities too. For example, the recent vulnerability was caught in 2021. If you uh, were using MuleSoft Studio there, like any point studio there, then we were told to remove like Actually, it was a header injection. So basically, when you uh, expose your service in Log4J2, from there, someone from the header, if they inject their, uh, like, I think it, it was D, uh, J and DY, DI uh, error uh, injection, and from there, they can get into your system. So if they get, they can get into your system from uh, logging, they can manipulate the files and they can take the sensitive data too. So now let's explore what are the components of this log for j2 so the first component for the log for j2 is appenders so these appenders are nothing but it is take as take it as an example like it is the destination where you want to send your files where you want to create your logs or your information logging information so these are the appenders it is present again in log4j2. So for this, this example, 
this appender is telling that we need to create a rolling file anywhere depends where is the file name like where is file name says that so this will default create in mule home as we say system mule dot home so this is the role of appenders so appenders essentially describe how to deliver the logging events to the to a destination the second part is rolling file so coming back to this so this was the appender now this is the rolling file so rolling file gives you the information that how the what will the file uh, like format how the file format will look like and what we will be the name of the log file what will be the triggering policy policy and like when the default rollover strategy will happen for example this has 10 mb max then a, a new file will be generated and if it increases with 10 more than 10 mb because generally if you are in cloud environment if the data file goes into mbs that that is a huge file for them and it is very hard to process. So basically we divide the logs to multiple files and if it's increasing more and more. So coming back to this. So this, this was the rolling file basically tells you what file name is there. Now the location file name. So basically, as I told, like what, what, what your file name is. So here it is test.log. So it will tell test and whatever it is like, these are the identifiers that what your path is there, what, what kind of pattern is there. So I will come back to this percent I in this. So this is the pattern layout. So percent P says, what is the priority level of the logging event? Percent D says, what is the default format of the date and time when it is, it is logging and percent D is a thread name that generates the logging event. So basically this is the pattern percent minus p percent d t event and correlation id and then so it will create a file we'll see in the coming demo how it gets created yeah the second part so this was appenders now the second part is loggers so basically loggers in loggers what we do is we say that what are the packages and what are the systems to be logged and where the services should be sent so for example so the, the, here we are saying that this can be logger can be synced or async. So here, what we are doing, we are making async loggers that these are the logger services and this should be logged and this should be logged at level one, 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 sorry, like it's warning. Similarly, these are the three loggers for now. We are, we are logging three types of events, basically services. If it is from here, basically runtime service, runtime logging extension mule extension service http service so any http calls or any http type of service happening and the third is any mule dot service dot http is having uh, running and that is only this condition is only when it is a warning sign so any service is getting called and it's uh, it's a warning level then it will be locked otherwise it won't here similarly here all the mule runtime like runtime logging will be locked through this async logger now we use async logger because it is more faster and it it's turnaround time is very less similarly for this async root we are making a root element like asynchronous root that it and here for all these loggers we are appender we are appending the reference which is different file so the file is nothing but this file we from where what we name it so coming back to this, this route can be only used oh. once. So it's async routes cannot be more than one in one logger. Now, again, so async route is the main conversation. Like it's a, it's a root element of the logger. And it here we can tell that if you want to your log your event to synchronously or asynchronously, and we'd use it asynchronously in production environment because it has, it, it shows it has low latency and this asynchronous loggers was uh in like introduced in log for j2 so earlier in log for j these asynchronous loggers were not there and it was really slow so in log for j2 this asynchronous loggers were introduced so again coming to uh, appender reference that is the name element of the value of a appender basically that this links to the file that all this 
all this logger elements will go to this file. Now, in this uh, event, we are, we are going to do the logging with on-premises deployment, but we can also do it in Cloud Hub. So in, if you want to do it in Cloud Hub, Cloud Hub has its own logging mechanism. First, you need to disable that. So Cloud Hub will disable its own me uh, logging mechanism, and then you can customize your Log4J2 again, and then after your Log4J2 will come into picture or action. Otherwise, uh, the if it's a deployed in Cloud Hub, the Cloud Hub manages all the logging things. So this is the ar architectural diagram where we can see that when you can you can you can deploy your application either in Cloud Runtime, which is anywhere anywhere on Cloud. Generally, we do it on Cloud Hub. And there, the second thing is on-prem. So basically, you can deploy it on your premises. Then you can again deploy it on your premises and monitor it on Cloud Hub. So, and again, you can deploy it on your premises and you can also manage and see the logs in your on-prem itself. And then again, you can integrate third-party applications. We will try to integrate third-party applications also in this demo. Uh, for example, Splunk, New Relic, these are some third party applications. So these are some specialized logging tools. So here logging capability is there, but Newsoft is more integration tool. So they provide a logging, even Cloud Hub provide insights monitoring all the logging, but these tools are specialized for logging and you can also use a query for logging. So for example, if you have millions of logs, so if for one year, one year production, you, you can have millions of logs and you can bulk query those. You can, uh, so Newsoft won't take more than 100 MB or 30 days. So for this Newsoft Cloud Hub won't store data, like won't store your logs more than if it increases from 100 MB or it gets older than 30 days. But this uh, third party application can have much more capabilities and you can also use query to search your logs. So before moving to demo, let's also discuss what are the best practices when coming to logging. Because if you log too much, so basically it is said that don't log little and but don't log too much also. So if you increase logger and logger again and again unnecessarily, it won't it will just cause a traffic and it will just cause your application to run slow. But also and if you it won't be able to you can make you can't make much sense if you see any logs on cloud hub or even in your systems if they are too much logging so the best practices are basically the standards are json we used most probably we should you should use while logging you should use json which should be key where key value pair we can also use other formats but most it is mostly told to use json's only so there are also json loggers specialized json loggers for this so they have much more feature than common loggers, which is present in your Newsoft. But that JSON loggers you need to import in your studio first to use it. Again, coming to the second point, which is request identifier. So the request identifier is nothing but you, if for example, if you take correlation ID, make it a transaction ID in your request identifier, you can check what and when it is happening. For example, one connector, it is a DB connector. It is taking five minutes. So with the use of this request identifier, you can see that this event after, from here to here, it took almost 10 minutes. So how you can increase the speed, increase the processing and what you can doing wrong. So similarly, you can also trace from new event to event, like where the flow is going and from transaction, like basically in this example, we're using correlation ID. You can use anything else also from end to end, like from where it went to where. Always use informatic message because if you use one to log, not, that that won't make sense. So always use uh, uh, the informative message. Like it's uh, sometimes you can use a debug logger. You can say that this is the payload. This is the request payload in the messages only. And then you can like a key can be the request payload and the value can be the real payload, which which is coming before the HTTP. So you can have one before HTTP call, then have one after HTTP call. So same before and after external calls. If you can do dynamically assign values in your loggers, that is one of the best practices. So you don't need to hard code everything. 
you can change the values accordingly for example if you use variables and set the values identifiers uh, source so all this can be dynamically set and in the logger component only you can have these values so every time new request comes it will have its own values which was set dynamically in the variables so sometimes you use persistent logging so persistent logging basically like uh, you want to see that if there are so many log logs happening in your application so you want to see how your application was uh, behaving two or three days ago and if there are uh, so many applications uh, so many logs then if th that is better to have the historical log saved somewhere in your system so that we can in moving forward also we can use it so again coming back to this that not too much logging but not too little too so so these are the four pillars you can say that organize always organize your logs standardize stabilize and optimize so not so much more logging like not extra logging if you have extra logging then you need to optimize you need to standardize for example if it's a production employment uh, environment you don't want to log your payloads because that payloads can have credit card information anything which is very sensitive so you can you can't you should not log those payloads but again if you want to see then you can again for example if you uh, uh, what if you need somewhere in the payload like in future then you can have that payload as a debug mode so that in the production environment it won't show up unless and until you switch on the debug uh, mode so for example so other people if they don't have to switch on the they don't have permission to switch on the debug mode they won't be able to see the payload but if you are a developer and if you want to have to see this payload then you can just switch it on the like you can add a category basically like class that you need to switch on the debugging mode and then you can see the logs which have the payload too so again this was so this all was the general logging practices anywhere in the production environment anywhere in the company even if you are doing it locally in your system for practice now coming to enterprise environment basically it's a business environment so for business environment all those things are extra care taken care of because it it needs it's a it can have very sensitive data it can have 20 it should have 20 some some applications are so important that 27 4 into 7 monitoring is there so for example some transaction bank transactions uh, application is there and you are integrating those things so that 27 4 into 7 uh, locks are monitored that if some transaction so for example it cannot uh, we cannot afford a mistake that by mistakenly we sent a amount to someone others uh, account then someone uh, so transaction can be this uh, like this if that transaction has been done even by mistake we have to handle it we have to roll back and do the corrections as well so again as uh, as in enterprise so it will not just have one integration but many integration so it can have thousands of like even thousand or hundred of hundreds of apis in just one uh, in one product so for example facebook instagram all those famous applications have around more than 200 300 even if one can imagine can lead to 500 and more integration just in one application so so again more application more services more risk and you need to have like how to log this precisely so that it doesn't make your system slow performance doesn't affect your performance and also give you the better experience and much more faster results so basically sap salesforce they have very they are network of complex systems and for example sometimes salesforce doesn't uh, doesn't send their error responses it, it won't tell you what is the error it was just said every time it will send 200 okay then you have to customizely see that if the data is updated or not and sometimes you may have to raise your errors again by yourself and then log it that that, that is this this error has been occurred some in some systems some system may not uh like send you the errors too so managed system databases are very sent very sensitive you so for example, production databases if you are integrating you need to take care and you can need to track the record that whatever is happening again the last point is basically dedicated support and development so after development 
So the support never ends. So if I promised you support till 2024 and I developed this application today from here to 20, uh, like my, I developed this application and per, uh, gave it to you today. So for two years, this support will be there because it is a contract and for every th uh, bugs and or defects, I need to give you the, uh, like solution and I need to resolve it. So that is again comes from logging anything happens we need to continuously monitor and if anything is uh, happening anything is erroring out runtime is giving issue any issues we need to handle that too so as i already said that there can be different log styles and they should they can be different logger levels for so that this is the info which com which comes always as a default logging so when you create a new project you drag a logger this info will be the default but you can have few more like warn, trace, error, and debug. So debug, error, info, trace, warn. Debug is only activated when the you run your application in debug mode. Error is all the error logs. Basically, it will only show the error logs, which is erroring, errored out in your application. Info is the default. Whatever you set as an info, it will come always in your uh, cloud hub, not uh, cloud hub loggers or anywhere else. Trace will give you a very detailed view. It, 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 if you run trace, it will generate a very big file because it will, it's, it's a very close view too. And every minute services, which has been called will be there in trace. Bonding is something which is, which is not an error, but warning is is like a code smell basically it it is a warning for example if you use a bad job and you send a variable inside a bad job it it is not an error basically it will still work but as this variable in use of is a streaming value and bad job won't be able to uh like concatenate like uh, how it, it breaks the payload into size of hundreds whatever you say as a block size but it won't be able to do that same with the variable so it will give you the warning that, okay, you are sending the variable to a bad job. That is fine, but it won't be able to perform as it used to, as it performs on play load. So it, it, it wants you basically. So it can be something like your HTTP connector has this issue and all it's, it's not an error, but it's, it can be an error afterwards. It can lower your performance. That is a warning. So basically this were the levels coming back so these are the tools capability logs usually very factor tools capabilities what are the capabilities of tools for example hard-coded flow name with payload size this says the size of the payload this is flow dot name context aware of so concatenation concatenation is in and then again payload we are sending payload object id so here this this is something like uh, a wrong way of logging that at the rate at the rate and you're saying initial load and payload basically it's a payload you can also send this dynamically you can also take this from your property files and then send payload you can also set it from variables and then set it from payload so also as an identifier too so these are all just logging styles how to log so these are the levels i was talking about so are errors always errors so these are the questions so log levels so are errors always an error no it's not sometimes errors can be an indicative value sometimes errors are also inform uh, informative and sometimes you need to cause error by yourself for example you need so for your use case for, for example it can be different from use case to use case for my use case it can that this hap a scenario happens this is a happy path it should happen but similarly for your use case, that scenario happened, but it may happen that this scenario is not a happy path, but you need to, if that happens, you need to cause an error by yourself and then handle that in a different way. So uh, errors are always not, also not errors. You need to uh, use that as a key factor that some errors are also good, which basically like an ad, like dag ache so it's like something like that that errors are all not always error you need you can also utilize the errors warnings are your friend always so it's like 
okay don't go don't run it's the surface is slippery it totally depends upon you that are you planning to run or not but it's uh, as a friend i would warn you that okay don't run that that place is slippery so similarly warning locks are like like, like those that it tells you default log uh, in like de detail logs are in debug and event trace so what is detail log here is like if you open debugging mode it will also give you a uh, detail log but if you open trace trace gives you the most detail log okay yeah and not all le uh, log levels should be enabled like uh, need to be enabled in log 4 j2 any log level you can make it info are some default so you can even change it to debug okay so again coming back to the thing that not too much but not too little so too much like 1.44 times a day is is so it's a question that how what is that what is the excessive log logging and what is not so big basically for an one new event so for example this scheduler runs for one time then it should log more not more than 1.44 times a day just like we can have more logging but it will just cause noise so basically if you say that a music is only good when it it sounds meaningful but if if you add all the songs together play in one place in four speakers it will just create noise similarly so if you more more logging is just a noise so 1.44 times a day is treated to be accurate amount like not more like uh like actual amount which should be there like a recommended amount plus the payload for example if there is this loggers 1.44 times a day for one transaction 1.44 times a day per transaction we are talking not per day as an application but for per correlation a transaction happens this can uh, this should log for 1.44 times plus if there is a payload we can log that too that is also acceptable it should not per transaction should not like like an application should not log for transaction more per transaction more than 10 times in a week and 525 times in in a year so sometimes how to decrease if you have more logs you can only log errors when like see only log errors won't help you in a longer time but if you have like uh, so many things like if you need to log eventually but then you what you can do is you can log that uh, amount which is recommended plus the errors in a day in a day means all the errors basically errors you cannot skip errors for uh, your reliability of your application you need to log the errors so here with payload of hun payload 100 so 100 payload you need to you can have more so if payload increases if your transaction has most for example you are using for each and you are making a logic and all th things you can also increase so this is not hard and fast rule that you cannot uh, this is a recommended amount this again use case to use case some people need a very detailed logging and that if not done accurately so application is very big like flow event is very big then you can have more loggers too depends totally depends so use case to use. this is the recommended size but you can have more according to use case so see with payload of 144 times a day plus all errors still still a lot so it's, it is still a lot i know that if it happens so your application gives errors a lot then obviously it can have more errors in throughout the day your your cloud of logs can be very full or your on-prem logs can be also very full but still you need to see how to resolve those how to handle the errors and stop causing it there can be many ways so so it's not it's all as i said it's all about balance that how important is your application and how important is logging so see no need to log receive payload this is the question this you can log it but in debug mode because again the sensitive data can be there in higher environments in low environments that can be done again excessive logging it, uh, excessive logging means like if you log it will just cause noise you won't be able to even if if one transaction will have thousands of logs you won't be able to pinpoint that thing where it is getting what happening actually happening you will have to take read all thousand and track your flow event so again you need to consider what is the relevant thing you need to log and what is just in just a, for example you you 
sometimes you have to apply tokenization you take a token from somewhere you don't need to log that token in debug you need you can log that token so that you need to see that what token you are getting and if you are getting anything and then you are calling a service with that token so that requesting token part you can have it in debug mode but in not in logger so that that say so do you really have no have to know something went through or just fail one so basically this is also part so you can just have this fun in the start so basically in mule we use this standard practice that flow event where it starts and flow where it ends successfully so that is enough we don't have to see that okay every time you need to log that this this service we called was successful after that next service was successful so that we know if it starts and ends successfully then all the things went through accurately and in between you can track the payload in debug mode or anything fails then also you can track that only this is a, so it's all about more or less it's not about more or less it's about balance like uh, what is the context what is the guarantee like how your how more important your application is in respect to every detail sometimes if it's a bad job it millions of records are processing you know you should not log very much because it will have a very much of logs and you will lose your logs as well so and it, so again is is it is readable like if a human can read it if it's not a readable for single transaction it is not of not use again is it legal if you are sensitive data and you are for example credit card information you are logging it directly and every everywhere on the muse of like uh, who have the uh, per, uh, permission should also now see like what are the details are there so is it legal and what are the cost of logging so the more application your big is your you will need a more heavy performance uh, v core so and to make it more reliable you, again you will have to increase workers so that that also we need to check so if cost is getting high you need you need to make your application as small as possible and as precise as possible to make it more faster and per, have a more performance of that uh, that application so again uh, what are the stakeholders so it is all about enterprise involvement basically a production environment basically if some uh, let's take an example of instagram here also so did orders xyz go to a system a so basically this this you need to you can log that in the debug mode also that where that our event went so for example there can be multiple choices so you 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 need to see that where that choice went what what uh system was caught and who are the people asking questions here like so basically this logs sometimes you can log it and you can also like have in a message also in the transformation that sometimes for example if you publish to a queue it gives a message that that message is successfully published to a queue so that is kind of also the information you are sending to the system so who are the people that call is so does calling system needs that information it's fire and forget so most of the time in integration it is fire and forget if it's it doesn't need a real time response basically i send you the data and i am done with it i don't need to know that your where that data like was that data went like did that data went to the actual system for example coming back to my uh, our that previous example pantaloons when the extra like oracle system store system send the data to mulesoft they don't want to know that uh, that did it reach uh, service cloud or not they just no want they just will say that i send the data successfully mules have accepted they don't want to know that if that was successfully published to the uh, service cloud or not email sent to that or invoice message sent to that customer or not so they, that is not their uh, requirement here so if not the requirement they don't want so again when logging payload specially so ownership and restriction so what what can be logged and what cannot be that is also a condition here again integration between system therefore someone is interested about the data so try to solve during development most of the relevant support cases and try to overcome the the brilliant logging so basically some again uh in the logging as a developer in the middle where i want the data and i want the logs only which i need i don't need that what uh, uh what is relevant to stores and what is relevant to like uh this 
the target system but i will log in a such a way that anything comes up anything any problem comes in a middle way i should be handling it because the source and the target system in most of the cases won't have to been won't will won't be seeing that logs it is you the middleware is logs meant for they will have their own logs and uh, for example the source and their uh, the target itself so whenever they will see the so first thing they will do they will do and see their logs that was data sent from their end or not if it is sent from their end then it will be a question to be uh, uh, like question be coming to you they will not come and see your log because it is your code it is what you are doing then uh, accordingly you need to specify what is your requirement what will happen if something fails what what all things you will need to resolve those things so that is called a brilliant blog logging so that it's like less and concise and basically precise the word so net together multiple apps or system with correlation id so basically yeah so for example we know that we have uh, like multi level app connectivity so in musoft so it's like api led connectivity follows three types of layer which is experience exposed to the systems mid uh, process which is totally within our musoft capabilities where we process and transform all the things and the system api which need to be more secure which is connected to the real system and that secure that three layers makes a gap between the user and the system so system directly is not connected to the user basically outer surface so again a transaction comes a transaction happens or event happens in experience api how to track that event after that beyond that api then what we use we use correlation id or basically name it as transaction id and from there we send it to process and then process to system so we can pinpoint from the entry point which is experience api and from the exit point which is system api everything what happened to that transaction from where it went to we can also have custom logger connectors also in custom logging external system so basically here sometimes there are too much logs you know you need support system for example you need a third party support system i am the developer but i am not providing the support somewhere else service is providing support and they don't know musoft they they are just to hire like raise the tickets they just to support and they need to raise the tickets to musoft so so what they will do uh, we will expose integrate it with the third party system like new relic as plunk and there they will monitor 24 into 7 because they have more adv advanced tools whenever they will feel something is happening which is should not be there they will again come to me so that this is the transaction number here this was caused please check what was what went error or what went out and why it is and please resolve it so this is the uh, how custom logging works this will be seen right now so log for j2 okay so log for j2 can handle nifty so not always needed since so basically logging is already there in musoft 2 this log for j2 adds an additional flavor you can have to customize most of the application most of the people who are developing don't even use log for j2 because most of our apis are deployed on cloud up and cloud up takes over the logging itself so even if even if you need a detailed logging if you need a customizable logging then only you go for log for j2 so again it's the same thing where to log logging strategy where to log what to log sensitive data handling uh, so these are the four logging strategy like uh, best practices first have a strategy what chain complex system together like if there are so many system just chain with so basically we do it with correlation id or transaction number and we chain we make like we pair it from one transaction to pinpoint it from end to end and keep it short readable and simple so don't make access log and don't try to assign law logger that okay this is doing this is doing, that that won't fix it keep it precise and always review your logs so what whatever you are logging always do one one review that what actually it is uh, sending the data and it, is it capable of that uh, like solving problems or not in future so some are bad practices it's like that it don't hard code your loggers because it won't hard coding will fix it so always same loggers will recurrence of loggers will be there make it more dynamic if you can empty loggers are just wastes of time and space it will again no need 
again the one of the bad is no logging uh, standards so anything you are logging that doesn't make any sense sensitive data and also that will cause problem so yeah be aware that it is 100 mb and 30 days first so if even if you're 5 mb of logs but 30 days of first cloud of won't take keep it so be aware of that if logs are important you need to save it to make it persistent so let's come to demo so yeah the first thing we will be seeing is how we can customize the logs so my use case is so our use case is basically uh, i have three types of connections sap sorry sap uh, sf and every log so i will have i want so everything happening to sap related to sap i want it in one file so basically every ha everything happening to this system or this uh, tool uh, connecting to any application or uh, for example to with http request uh, salesforce sap i need them in a separate files not in one file so that i in future if i want to see what happened with say, sap all the services happened with sap i'll see in that one file similar with sf i will see in one file so let's do that so let's first have one listener will invoke the flow okay let's not use it we don't have much time i'll tell you how to do it first so this is the rolling file as we know that this says this says that a file should be created at which place so it says that it should be created here so at mule home so we will be deploying it our on-prem so it will create an on-prem mule home server so this is test.i this so this i will name it all so i'll have one place where all files are there all logs are there this i will name it as uh let's name it as sf salesforce log so this will now create two files instead of one okay let me also save this instead of two uh, two files it will create one and then okay let me do one thing let me first show okay let's have this yeah now coming to this rolling file we are done let's come to async logger so logger async services right now we are logging these services now we want our services also to be logged so we'll keep it as info i want that my services will be logged so basically sf i'll keep it as fsf and i'll create one more so this was async logger now i'll create so this now i'm saying my logger that i need this service sf also to be logged and it will ask me where to log i'll give the reference that okay i need it to be logged it in the reference which is file so what my file name was i kept my file name as sf so i'll keep it as sf so this tells that is this will be logged in sf logs so and we are good if we now we go this need to make configuration and all so i already have this custom login so here you see i named it as all file second is file 2 so here it is it is more customized more detail file 3 so i have four files here so basically which is file one two three and all all five so basically all the logs in one so added three again added three async loggers which is sf going to file one sfcc going to file two and db going to file three here the logger category 
it is SF. So this is SFCC. So basically I'm defining the category. I'm saying that this is the type, this type of service. And the third one is DB. Okay. So if we deploy this custom, this project so these are the info level logs which mule runtime is saying these are the warning logs which was sent again, it's not, it, you need to consider those the application will fail. So these are the mule runtime, which is starting, which is server 4.4. Now, now my application will deploy on this runtime. So basically this is on prem only, but for embedded in this mule studio. Now. is on top of that mule runtime our application getting deployed it is slow so till this application did get deployed. Anyone, any question till now? We have few any questions, doubts? Robin. Okay, so I'll read that. I'll read them out to you. Do you want to answer them, Robin, uh, right now or uh, after this demo? Okay. See. So I log this info, this, and I log this as DB. So it is the category DB. Now I'll tell you where this, this, this also will create a file inside this runtime, but let's go to on-prem first. We'll export this as jar. So in my desktop, custom logging POC. Is this custom logging jar? So I copy this jar. I'll go to my runtime. This is my mule enterprise runtime. I'll start this runtime first. So this pat file will start my runtime. And on top of it, I'll deploy my application. So MuleSoft also provides that you can deploy it on your own premises and manage it from Cloud Hub. So that is additional thing you need to do configure it and then you can this application also which is on your on-prem can be managed from cloud up similarly as you directly deploy on cloud up so this is this is the runtime which is deployed now i'll uh, deploy my application so for deploying the application i'll paste this application here so this this text file shows me like this got converted that this application is deployed me check so it is getting deployed it will create a txt file which is an anchor file to undeploy it it's still getting deployed very slow Match. 
actually I think I did a mistake opening the file when it was getting deployed mm, which made mm, see yeah let me deploy it again okay so let me check if mule runtime is there okay let me start mule runtime once again So this is a trial pack, gives you 30 days free trial. And you can directly download this from Musoft's site. Yeah, let's see what happens in the runtime. cannot be used by another process okay let's close this okay 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 got it got it let's stop this runtime first hmm. go to runtime again application still getting deployed Applications copy if needed. Till it's get deploys deployed, I'll show you in runtime. So this embedded runtime also has one mule home, which is this. So this basically this is the mule runtime address. Let's go in here and check if our log got created or not. So let's open new window and search for this. So this is our server. Now in the logs, we'll check if our, so see our log file created, but for now we only invoked one of the logs, not all. So log all is full. You can see this column got populated. POC DB is populated because we called it for two times. Now it will get appended every time. This POC demo is blank. This POC SF is also blank. This POC SFCC is also blank. So let me deploy this again. Don't save. Okay, it also got deployed. This this is taking. I don't know why this runtime is getting so much time. Okay, so on both the places, just start. Let's close this one. Otherwise, it will create conflicts on port. So let's send this one. Now it is stopped at this, but it is still it is here stop, but it's still deployed at runtime. So this works. Let's take log two. Log two is called 
let's take logged one so this is a bad practice see we i cannot know that what category is being caught so this is one example of the bad practice so log one which like sf files are stored here is this db is there yes. so it says log one is called here but here it is sf files are stored here so the category is ff now we'll go to our mule runtime the logs we'll see that all files are getting created and those two files are zero because till now we have not called it we call the db and it is there we call the all it is all the logs now let's call more which is log one log two log three Okay, we only have log three. Okay, one is all five. So now it was all zero. Now we will see that it's not zero anymore. We have SF files are stored here twice. This is twice because I think earlier also I called those transaction, but this was not refreshed. Now this SFCC logs are stored here. So every time I'll hit a request here. Log four is not here. Only. Okay. Every time I'll hit a request, log two. If I'll see there, I'll go here. Need to refresh. Log two was this? No, not this one. Yeah. See. So, SFCC logs are stored here. So here, now what we are doing, we are making secretion, like separating all the files. So if I make any in this Mule Studio. Uh, I have a big flow. I'll uh, in the log category. If I know that this is separated to SAP, so for example, if some HTTP request is happening from here, from request to end of request, I'll say that this is HTTP request SAP. Then all the files relating to which happened during that tran transaction can be separated in one file. So this is how we achieved the segregation of logs, because in general, if in all the general logs are generally in one file, which is the name of the file. So this POC demo is the name of the project. Similarly, this will only, the general file will be generated like this. If you don't customize, if you run any application, it will be the name of the application and it will be generated in single file. Basically the file will look like from inside, it will look like this. Now coming with the last thing is like integration. Now let's, this, this thing we have done, we have categorized the law. Now let's manage this application from the third party, basically something like new relic or Splunk. So for that, again, we'll use log 4 j 2 So this POC demo has a log for J2. So this appender, I said, like earlier, I said that appender is nothing but sets the destination. So right now it is rolling file. And now we also added this. This HTTP, where we say that the HTTP name is new relic, the URL, the value, and the application. Now, what we'll have to do, we'll have to go to wait, new relic site. Okay, so in new relic site, I'll go that insert keys. So let me introduce the site. So it will have all this information. This is new relic. It will have all this. And this is a specialized tool for logging and all other things as well. Now it is more than just logging. So now I'll go to my name. I'll go to API keys. So I'll have to authenticate this. Insert insights, insight inserts key. Now this is API keys. Now what I'll do is create one. So this will give me this insert key which is the key and the url basically from where you need to key but uh, so this is the url now this one i deleted i already have one this one so i'll go to my studio In the studio i'll have this 
uh, added here new relic the url the key and then then I'll, it's from here the thing is done from here the new relic is configured so i told my api this is my keys and all now in the new relic i'll go and create one dashboard in dashboard i'll so in dashboard okay i already created a dashboard let's go inside the in dashboard i'll i can create multiple this tablets like again it's changes from different to, uh, premium subscription to now so for now i will add a like a table and here i can write the query so what i want to run like basically what i want so for example i need so here see i can add full severity of the items logs so i'll show you what i did so these are the mule logs uh like i'm selecting from mule logs and integrated with my application this uh new relic is integrated with the application and we are checking this star from new logs since day one so basically all the logs now with the similar this one it is i need to new logs but severity should be high since day one so let's go this now a mule application is deployed okay this is not deployed run this application poc demo okay just save this So again this is the mule home so let's go here i think we already went once let's see if we already have this so apps config so apps will be all the apps it is similar to on-prem just it is on-prem embedded in this mule studio it will be creating a file it will also create an anchor so you you can directly be like you can use this also basically this is your on-prem you can go to bin you can start the server and you can deploy directly from here you don't need to use studio you just need a jar file so here also lock so this is the locks i had i had so here also it is not created here because i did not deploy it in on embedded and run uh, like calls the system but for all the things i call for this uh on runtime console log so if you okay i cannot go back but in if all the console logs were here I can deploy both i can show both of the things okay now let's look at poc demo so this is new relic flow this is transformation i'm doing that robin sina and i'm setting it to log for j2 payload and this is again one transformation which is a variable logs and here it is setting to severity high email soft stg demo and all because you see and this logger i'm sending to this and the category i'm setting to this so I, if i make a request i'll get the payload as a response like whatever the last new payload was and let's see if i have something in new relic so I think let's delete all these things then only we'll get okay let's just create one instead of deleting create one more table so we'll select this query close this we'll have one more table paste this query we'll run this We'll have the data uh, okay new Wait, this we will have one more dashboard like in dashboard we'll have one more this now we can export this as csv we can also create a alert notification for example something uh, is a query for example if this happens so everything is fine but if sap is called anywhere i need a notification alert then from this tool can do it externally so it will keep monitoring my loss so this is all monitoring 
here and we are it, it will keep monitoring my logs and anywhere that sap is called it will create a notification and even if i'm not available i'll get a mail that okay sap is called the severity is high or low anything and we can check it accordingly so this let's let's create a severity with low okay now this is the condition i'm selected is like select start from mule software severity is high since day one okay Sorry. now i'll select where severity is low It won't find till now any, but no. okay. So these are old requests. Let's change it to where severity is acceptable uh, or uh, medium. Let's make it medium. We won't find any. It's with this. Now I run this. I won't. I don't have any. Let's change it to medium. Save this. There's no data here. Now what I'll do? I'll go to my application. Here I'll set it to medium. Okay. And we are good now we save this let's deploy both our application we'll test that also we which we left mm, run configuration we'll select both apply run so basically this warning comes says that the one runtime all is already embedded to your system which is like one runtime is running you want to redeploy your application you want to remove that runtime so now it will take time because it will remove the runtime which was already deployed and then redeploy that again the same runtime and then we de uh, deploy the application over it so till now it was mule runtime which was getting deployed so this is 4.4 a mule server which this application in point studio deployed now it will deploy my application over that one time so, so it is starting one application then it again it will start another application it, it may take some time depending upon the size of the application which is initializing that custom logic poc Okay, I think both of the listener is somehow 8081. Okay, this is 91. Then let's see if our application is deployed or not. Yeah, it is deployed. Now let's see what created or not. See, our transaction came that the environment is staging and so the environment was staging and our severity was medium uh, let's expand this and check this so it says medium so now we are segregating our app application logs using new relic 
features and tracking all the logs here so these are the medium logs these are the high logs and these are the like we can also have low and all these are the all logs so this is one way to integrate the systems with again with log user of log for j2 with third party application this is new relic splunk is another tool there are more third party tools as well now the last thing which was let's see if this is deployed or not log d yeah so this is also deployed that was just a warning i guess so now okay now let's undeploy this first i'm not sure which logs is let me say check the lock on so okay yeah so this this is not getting to this this is getting to run uh, on prem so that's what i was saying that that error caused was because it got deployed to on prem not this like not new any point studio but my original on prem it is reflecting those things so let's go there this is my server let's undeploy my application here first that's why it failed due to conflict now i'll delete this anchor file and this application will get undeployed disposing the application so undeploy artifact custom logic some more time let's just close this now i close the server only now let's go to our our thing let's deploy it again now let's just deploy our application not all the application take much time run i need only custom log screen poc till then let's copy the address of our run time run time these are logs most probably it should be yeah it should be blank for now because this has been never been called from studio now let's get this deployed Amazing. started so this again studio can have different run times 4.3 4.2 you just need to install it so again all those are different run times Game board got deployed. That's why it took time. Okay. Log three, log two, log one. Didn't apply it, so that's why both got deployed. But we don't need to have problem. Yeah, let's see. So it was blank earlier. This is Mule runtime. This is not my runtime. This is the a uh, stooling server basically for this embedded runtime for this anypoint studio so these are the files sf file so here also you can do it's a similar runtime basically uh, that is the external runtime which i'm keeping i don't need to have a studio for it and this is embedded runtime which mule runs when it comes in a package application itself so uh, this is basically mule home so both the places you can have it let's check the hierarchy of this runtime so this is mule if you go back oh sorry let's just go till here so it will give you this server to go back more to you can have like this this is any point studio where where your application package is. you go to plugins there you need you need to see search for where is your tooling server then my tooling server is this this can be a little difficult to find 
Ah, so 4.4. This is my tooling server which installed to my studio. I go inside. This is my uh like have all the information about the server. I'll go inside Mule. Now this is my all the Mule related things to the server. So this is application. So this application, see these this application is there. I need to undeploy one of them. So I'll undeploy, undeploy here. If I undeploy here, most probably I'm not very sure it should get undeploy here as well. See. Similarly, it's same thing. If you deploy something here, it will start running here because it is basically connected to each other. Now I, I, I undeployed this one also. Now it will it take it can take time, but it will surely reflect here as well. So this was logging customization, logging with integration tools and with integrated with MuleSoft and the best practices. Anything, anyone? Okay, let's go back to the PPT. So this is the Q&A time. Anyone, anyone has any questions? Uh, Robin, uh, you're able to hear me? Hello. I think. I think. See few questions in the. It is. Yes, yes. So I was talking about this only. So the quick fix was that in studio we need to like that header you need to make it like you had to make it to false that on header level anything comes that that is false for now and after that in the coming new uh like new versions of milsoft studio like any point studio they made it default false for now if you go there if you see it in the configuration it is always default false earlier it was true so one uh someone could uh, come inside through logging and then manipulate your files so rolling files other than that i said you like uh, there they can be http requesters like how i did it for integration with splunk or like a new relic similarly can be used for splunk anything anything which can be integrated with milsoft to logging can go as a destination there and your files will go there as well so it is for now going as in the rolling file also and it is going there also yeah see so jdbc jms any anything you can use there If I want to rename my project and I have deployed the project, can I see the logs or should I make it any changes in that? So if you need to, okay, you if you have already, so basically the project name doesn't matter, but the artifact ID matters, whatever it is in your form file. So before deploying, you need to update that. You cannot dip, uh, like change it while it's deployed. You need to change that artifact name and then you can redeploy it and then again you you can able to so again in cloud hub basically a new application will be like redeployment how you do it like a new time will be there in cloud hub and then you can see the logs uh in any point studio again so the logs which are already generated to that application so log for j2 will be the same configuration if it is in inside the pender so always it is it will be there so already the logs which went to new relic will be saved there so you don't have to take problem that okay your application name is getting changed if you will have one log so if that so basically we are characterizing here by using this so the query we were working on was not on the application level but basically all the logs which we sent from event type mule logs will be shown so even if we, i make one more application and i'll do uh, with any name and if i give the event type there because the query we were running in that uh, uh new relic was categorizing in basis of from mule logs 
so this 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 how it works so you can obviously have more application integrated here but again again you will have to give more information so that you don't uh, miss something yes yes okay you want yes uh, not on on prem deployment but in cloud hub deployment you can so if you categorize it cloud see as i said that cloud hub has his own mechanism of uh, logging and insights so it provides uh, it provides so very much customization we can have one more session on cloud hub deployment itself and with how it gives his own logging and insight and how if it is disabled and you gives log for j2 configuration so similarly we can uh, uh, push our log for j2 customization to cloud hub as well by disabling cloud hub original logging and we don't need to uh, change and that this categorization you don't need to you can filter log on the basis of category directly in log cloud hub you don't have to do it from log for j2 it was only for on prem uh, to have it in different files yes 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 obviously so basically in cloud hub in log for j2 files i gave here info you can also give warn so any type so basically any time warn will come a uh, warning type of le level will there then only this log will happen otherwise won't so to recreate that scenario is little tough that's why i kept on the info and for debug you can also keep it debug then we'll have to just run the application in debug mode then this log will come uh in cloud of 2.0 no no it's still 100 mb as of now uh, i'm not very sure but it can be 200 MB, uh, but as far as I remember, uh, I was using Mule 4.3 runtime, but it has 100 MB plus 30 days, whatever comes first. And maybe in 2.0, it is 200. They have increased. Okay, you have to change the name of appenders to appenders, as in I didn't this get this question. No, I we don't have to change the name of the appenders. We can just uh, keep pasting the rolling file is the like not a name but basically a part of appender so again a rolling file and you will change the name of the file you're good yes 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 so basically in the cloud hub you again you can do this as well so even the application is in cloud hub you can still have those locks sent also sent to the Splunk and all. You just need to add some disable. The, yeah, so disable the cloud platform. Basically, you have to do this, and you can again send manage from different tools because lock for J two is default built in there, but it won't get activated unless and unless uh, until you uh, just disable the cloud hub logging mechanism. Yeah, this can be one scenario that you 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 can add one up this this we need to test that you also add a cloud hub plugin there and also a splunk plugin there and you disable cloud basically anyway you need to disable the uh, uh, the default cloud hub log, log, logic uh, logger but logging mechanism and logging service and then you can uh, again use it through cloud hub. you you can get your way through log for j2 for sure can we define this in async logger morning yes yes we can okay so over to you giri and subram i think we are good any more questions do we have any questions anyone else If not, we can start with the trivia. All right. So we are uh, playing the quiz on Kahoot. Anyway, uh, I, I was I am able to. Uh, I mean, you guys are able to hear me, right? Anyone can just enable mic and confirm. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes, we can. Thanks. Thanks for confirming. Okay. So yeah. Are... Shubham, you there? I think he's not able to hear us. Okay. So we we are continuing for now. Uh, so we are playing the quiz on Kahoot. Here's the pin. Let me share the pin in chat. Okay, just go to Kahoot.it. 
I'm into the spin. All right. So I'm just sharing my screen. Let me know if you have any issues in joining the quiz. Let me see if anyone has any issues. Am I audible, guys? Yes, uh, Robin, can yeah. you hear us? No? Yes, yes, now I can hear you. I think there was some glitch. I yeah. Uh, yeah. So, sure. any questions from any side? Like, I couldn't hear anything. No, no, Robin, there were no, no, no questions. For okay, okay. okay, thank you, everyone. So if anyone has one voucher in the last 30 days, so he, he or she will not be eligible. So there's some ground rules for that. And any any issues in joining the quiz? Let me know in the chat. Okay. So all right. Uh, just one announcement that we we have a next meetup on on Saturday with the SAP integration. So MuleSoft integration with SAP. Do register, and we'll wait for uh, one thirty seconds. And if anyone any issues, let me know. Else we will log the quiz and start. Okay, I think we are good. I'll log in 30 seconds. Anyone let me know if any issues. I think no. All right. We can start 38 participants. So first question is just a test question. Great. Let's move to the next. All right. Let's move to the next question. All right. So read the question carefully because it's a little bit tricky. Right. Let's see. Michelle is on top. Okay. Most of you selected the correct answer. Okay. Once he's still on top, once he's on top, easy question, yes. Okay. 
okay once he's still on top let's just ask question The correct answer is only one, right? Let's see who are the winners. So winners, congratulations and share your email IDs in the chat or DM me. And let's see. Congrats to all the winners. Okay, Bilash and Charan are runners. All right, let's see. Share your email IDs and thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Robin, for awesome. your great session. Yeah, it's very, very informative, Robin. Thanks, Kidwear and Super. Yeah, thanks, Robin. Thanks, everyone. Let us know if you have any questions related to this one or anything else. Else we will close the session. <laughs>